Now that you have Nuke up and running, let's talk about preferences. There are a few different tiers of preferences. It ranges from a per project level to a viewer level and even a full application level. You can modify those via GUI input, which I'll show you in just a moment, as well as via Python and some direct modification with text files. So first off, we have our project level settings. So if you hit the S key, or if you go to edit project settings, it'll pull up in the property bin your settings for that specific project. This only applies to the open project and it won't carry over to any other projects. So this is where in your initial root tab, this is where, you're, where you'll modify your frame range. Locking all connections is actually locking your node graph so that changes can't be made. This is useful if you're just checking something out and you want to peek or poke around but not actually accidentally undo anything or change something. You can set your format, your proxy mode if you're using proxies. Uh, you can also ver set if it's a live group, which is a little beyond the scope of this. You can go in, modify your color space settings. We're only going to show you that this is here. We'll talk about color space later. Views if you're working in stereo or you have some, some other settings. This is something where you would modify your views. Python, if you're doing anything with scripting and you want to tie this to other systems, you can actually use these to load and run fi uh, programming snippets, you know, on load, save, or close. Node, this is some just general stuff. If you have fonts that you want to repath, this is where you would operate that. This is actually really useful if you're working in a multi-system environment where you might open the script on one type of machine or another. You can rescan font paths and you can reload fonts as needed. So next up, similarly, you can actually hit the S key while hovered over the viewer, and this will pull up your preferences for that viewer. In general, I always want to use my GPU when possible. Another big one to pay attention to is the GL buffer. Usually you want this set to half float or float. Byte is an 8-bit process, so if you're using a 10-bit monitor and you're running it in byte mode, you're actually not realizing the full potential of your monitor. So you almost always want to have that set to half float. You can also change how some of the LUTs and other things interact, how your your zoom and overscan display. Mostly I leave this stuff alone. The big thing is using half float, and then I also want to leverage my GPU when possible. So next up is our main system level settings. And this, is, this will apply to every instance of Nuke that you open. You can access that via the edit menu, preferences, or you can use the hotkey shift S. So once we're in here, on our general tab, we have auto save settings. Mostly leave this alone. There are cases where you might wanna modify your auto save settings if you're having file IO issues or you're working with extremely large files. Auto save can cause a network hang from time to time if it's something really big or you're on a particularly slow network. So it's just something to be aware of as you move into it. There's also, in general, the option for path substitutions. So if you are working in a multi-platform environment, you can actually set your drive mappings and mount points um, per operating system here. And I'll go over this in the tips and tricks because there's actually a few different ways to do this with different uh, pros and cons for each. Then we have our project defaults, channel management, unless you know why you're changing that, just leave it alone. Color management, kind of the same thing. You know, Nuke default is a pretty good default. If you're getting into more advanced stuff with ACES, then this is where you would make that modification. Same with views. This works similarly to the way it's set up in your actual project. You can add stereo views or do, do any modifications there. Next up is performance. This is really the big one. This is where you can squeeze the most out of your PC that you can. But you can also cause it to be fairly unstable if you're not paying attention to what these settings are. So first up is our temp directory. This is something you want to make sure you have set locally to as fast a disk as you can. You know, if you have a machine with multiple hard drives and you can earmark one to be your cache directory, this is a really good setting to change if you need to. You can also then set your cache size. You know, I always try and run this as big as I can. You know, in this case, I'm actually running a disk with a few hundred extra gigabytes specifically for caching space. So I'll usually set this up to 100. Sometimes if I'm working on really big jobs, I'll go up even more if I know that I need that space. Roto paint cache, 
that's just roto paint cash if you use that a lot you might want to move that up or down and i also want to say that all of these settings are very machine specific so there's not really a perfect number for each of these settings you're going to want to kind of feel how nuke's running and see how your your stability is and sort of dial these numbers to your specific machine playback size you can change this up or down some people like more playback cache than less you know if you're doing a lot of review just in the viewer and not using a flipbook or rv or a third party viewer this is something you can really play with to optimize your playback uh, similarly I personally like to cache in the background while I'm checking email or doing something else or using another instance of Nuke. So these settings are really important for that. You can actually tell Nuke to pause. So if you are using something that's very resource intensive, you can set it to pause caching or clear the cache when the back when the app goes into the background. That'll actually let Nuke it'll release the data it has in RAM so that it's available to other applications. Now, caching, undo caching, this is a big one for me. I always like to set this considerably higher than its default. I like to set it to 250 megs, and I like to set it to 25 events. You know, it's very easy to be working in a paint tool or some other tool where you're making a bunch of small changes, and then you want to undo back 10, you know, 10 events. So this is a big one that I would highly recommend boosting up. You know, I like 250 and 25. That seems to be kind of the sweet spot. Any more than that, and you may or may not undo as far back as you want, depending on the tool set you're using. But I found that this really makes it a little bit friendlier if you make a mistake or you go down the wrong path for a few minutes and then you need to come back. Expressions, you can read about that somewhere else. GPU, this is, or uh, hardware, this is an important one. So with the GPU setting, you do want to make sure you're using your GPU if you have one available. Occasionally, this will default to use CPU and you still have a GPU available. Always check and make sure you're using that because most of the time your GPU is going to let things go faster than just CPU. Localization, this is a really big one and I'm actually going to do a tips and tricks on this as well. The gist of this is you can set your files to pull over to a different drive that's faster or local without having to actually repath your script. So you can leave everything connected to your network server, but it's actually accessing the files from a local drive. This is really nice if you're working in a, you know, a, a NAS environment or somewhere else where you're opening the same script on multiple different machines because you can gain the speed of your local drives and also not clutter up your network pushing gigs back and forth as each machine is trying to load or cache the files. Auto localize basically is a automatic localization. So you actually enter a server path in and if Nuke sees a file that is within that path, it'll automatically localize it. And I like to set that, you know, that's usually my default. Storage limits, that's exactly what it sounds like. So you can set that to store as much local data as you want or as you have space for and it shows you how much you have available and how much you're in use. Network, so if you live in a very volatile environment, say you have CG files that are being overwritten regularly, you might want to actually noodle this setting. This is one of those things where, you know, usually source files don't change much, but there are occasions where a source file might be changing more often than every half hour, and this way it'll scan it. If it sees something new, it'll automatically relocalize. Threads and processes. So this is the one where you can really get the most out of the machine. And this is relevant to frame server. And frame server is the ability of Nuke to spin up other instances of Nuke and render in small batches. And what this does is lets you optimize your cores and your RAM utilization so that you can get the most horsepower out of your machine possible. Basically, the idea here is you want to you want to find a balance between keeping your machine usable, especially if you're on a, you know, a high-end desktop rig that has, you know, up to however, you know, 128 threads. You can actually set this so that you can use most of them or you can dedicate a very specific amount of threads and RAM to use for nuke rendering. You know, on my particular system, I'm running a 16-core Threadripper with 64 gigs of RAM. 
if I have a specific comp that is very RAM intensive, I might actually increase my core count per process so that I'm using less RAM in total, you know, or it allows me to allocate more RAM per process. You know, if I'm running something that's really lightweight with RAM, I'll actually run more processes with less cores so that each one gets a little bit of RAM and I actually can really optimize each each comp to render as efficiently as possible. And you can set these with just simple settings of more responsive UI, which basically means is it's limiting a little bit. It's not letting it go full out. No render limits means it just tries to run full out. And then you can actually customize that by setting your number of processes, number of threads per process, and number of gig, or, you know, gigs per process of RAM. This is where you can really fine tune and you know, squeeze a full 100% out of your machine and maybe keep it, you know, available to browse the web or do other things instead of just full locking up.